Kindle Podcast Episode 145. In this episode, I want to talk about abilities to go beyond. Kindle Podcast by Hiro Mafuji from KindleGuy.com. Thank you for listening. This podcast is about Japanese martial arts Kendo for Kendo lovers and supported by Kendo enthusiasts through Patreon.com. Thank you for your support, guys. Please visit KendoGuy.com for more Kendo information and how to support KendoGuy.com. Welcome to Kendo Podcast episode 145. Uh, this is actually uh, from uh, Well, the name of a book written by Koji Muro Fushi. Uh, he, uh, he is a former hammer thrower, uh, a Japanese hammer thrower. And in Japanese title, Japanese title is Koeru Chikara. So I, ju- I translate it uh, as abilities to go beyond. So, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm still suffering a little bit from my asthma attack. Uh, uh, so he is about the same age as I am. Actually, he is a, one year younger than him. Ah, I am. <laughs> he, is, he is one year younger than I am. So he, is, uh, he was born in 74. And he, he, he was the number one Japanese uh, hammer thrower for like ages. And he's, I think he's the first Japanese、uh, hammer thrower who、uh, threw、uh, over 80 meters. And he, the, the reason I, I wanted to talk about、uh, him is I was interested in how he trains. And he, he retired, so、uh, he's not、uh, really throwing a hammer anymore. <clears throat> But、uh, he's now, I, I think he's a professor as well. And You know, the, the attitudes, toward,、uh, attitudes of him towards hammer throw, throwing is really、um, you know, something we want to learn from because、uh, he's a top athlete. It doesn't mean you know,、uh, we cannot do the same thing. Of course, you know, ability wise, physical ability wise, probably we cannot be like him. Especially、uh, now I'm 45 and, and you know, I probably cannot be like him. But attitude, we have to learn, I think. Now,、uh, he is a bit small for a hammer thrower. If you,、uh, he is actually number four in,、uh, in the top、uh, 25 hammer throwing in the past,、uh, the record wise. And.、Uh, Everyone is,、uh, w- everyone weighs, not everyone, the top three weighs more than 100 kilograms, which is about 220 pounds. So everyone is <clears throat> really big, but、uh, he is less than 100 kilograms, less than 200 uh, two, uh, pounds. His height, he's quite. Uh, uh, tall for、uh, Japanese, and、uh, he is like 187 centimeter, which is you know, people are tall in this uh, uh, sport, so uh, he's not really uh, uh, height wise, he's probably average, or a little taller, maybe I don't know,、uh, but weight wise, he's not as heavy as other guys, and to you know.、Um, He's the only one, I think, Asian who is in top 20,、uh, 20 or 25、uh, hammer throwers in the world. And、uh, well, I probably have to, to be fair,、uh, he, has, uh, he is a part Japanese and a part Romanian. I don't know how、uh, this affects, but、uh, you know, if we talk about that,、uh, You know, we, we probably have to talk about some、uh, other researches. So, but、uh, I want to talk about what he, how he competed with these bigger guys in this you know, hammer throwing world. You think you know, physical strength, you know, power is everything. But you know, if you think it's,、uh, power is everything,、uh, you know, he cannot win. 
because he's not obviously he's smaller than other people so he's not as, uh, as heavy as other people uh, you know maybe he has muscles but you know he has to compete with big among big guys so how did he approach uh, to his hammer throwing abilities now I, I think uh, I can have three uh, feels from his uh, three aspects uh, from his book. Now, he was uh, going for ideal hammer throwing and his attitude towards learning and also uh, he, his humble development. So I want to talk about ideal because this without this his ideal uh, hammer throwing idea, we probably cannot talk about other attitudes as well. So let's talk about it. So I, what is his ideal? You know, he is in competition all the time. So he competes in the world, uh, you know, in the worldwide in the Olympics and stuff like that. <clears throat> so, uh, you know, one competition, uh, he was, uh, you know, he, he couldn't do what he wanted to do. So he lost, basically. And, you know, he was thinking, you know, he he wanted to win so bad, he didn't enjoy. He didn't enjoy hammer throwing. He wanted to win so bad, he didn't win, he didn't enjoy his hammer throwing. So, uh, from then on, he stopped thinking about winning. So he stopped um, being victory-oriented attitude. So, uh, you know, it doesn't matter if he wins or if he loses. It doesn't matter how, uh, uh, doesn't matter uh, if he is second or first or third. You know, like, oh, I don't want to be second or I don't, don't want to be third. I want to be second. No, it doesn't matter those orders, right? What he was focusing, his, he changes his he changed his focus. He focused on ideal throwing. So uh, it, to us, we have to think about oh, uh, it's not about winning. That's what we always say in kendo. Uh, it's not about passing exam, of course. It's about ideal uh, kendo. What I, what I mean by ideal kendo, to me, I don't know if uh, to you, you know, the kendo is, uh, you know, the discipline, to discipline human character through the application of the principles of the katana. So that's my ideal kendo. I, I, I have that uh, concept of kendo uh, in my, uh, as, a, as the core of my kendo and then uh, study kendo. So that's my ideal. You know, so we need to have some kind of ideal uh, kendo, and then we can train. Of course, you know, winning and passing is a great motivation. But sometimes if you are fo focusing on those two elements, you know, one of those, too much, you sometimes don't enjoy what you do. You should enjoy what you do. Why? You have to enjoy the process of improving, you know. So that is, that's how he changes his attitude. Now, you know, if you're competing, uh, he's not really physically competing each other. He's throwing, he's competing the result of how far they can throw uh, this hammer, right? And... Uh, you know, he, he thinks if his competitors, his competitors throw their hammer far away, that motivates him instead of, man, you know, I wish they didn't do that. If they didn't throw that, you know, the, the, their hammer that much, that far, I could have won. No, it's not the attitude of he's having, he was having. Yes, okay, now they, they, they threw real far. Okay, so 
I have to I have to keep up with them, you know. Uh, they're doing very good job, so this is a good motivation for them. So we can kind of think about that too. Oh, if he strikes really good, man, man, I want to strike like him, you know. Instead of uh, focusing on losing, how bad we are or how good they are, we just focus on how great your opponent, your competitors are, and we can learn from. Them. You know, so it that is the way, you know, if they do good, you want to do good. You know, good as an ideal kendo. Or well, in his case, throwing the hammer, right? And also learning attitude. I think uh, if you have heard, if you have heard of Shu Ha Di, uh, if you haven't, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put a link. So please uh, go to the link and learn what they are. Uh, you know, le he has this attitude of uh, getting advices from a lot of people. And then you have to do trial and errors. You have to fail. You have to fix feedback. We talked about that in, uh, in the previous uh, podcast in, uh, when I talk about uh, peak. We, we try, we practice feedback, right? So we need to do that. This is a process we can avoid. And then uh, he said, we have to study hammer throwing. And we have to have those uh, processes of uh, how we can throw a hammer. So uh, this, this, he wasn't really, uh, you know, he, wa he, wasn't, he wasn't persist. Uh, what, what do you call it? He wasn't sticking to one method. He talked to a lot of people from the other fields, not only from hammer throwing field, other fields, not, uh, not track sports either, from other people. You know, for example, yeah, we do kendo, but if we think these footworks, we can, we can, if you think you can improve footworks in, you know, kendo by learning dance, you should do it. You might learn something. Uh, Yumura Sensei, Eighth Dan Sensei, I think he's already Hanshi, Hanshi Eighth Dan Yumura Sensei, he, I think he, that was him. If I'm wrong, I'm sorry. He learned uh, dance. And he, he thinks, he said, that that dance footwork helped him with kendo. So, you know, you have to, uh, widen your uh, eyesight, not eyesight, you know, look widely, look around, don't just think about Kindle, just take all the advices into your Kindle so you can kind of improve Kindle, right? So that is what he did. This is the attitude of learn, uh, his learning. And then uh, also this, you know, his his goal, his ideal is, uh, well, basically he wants to throw a hammer as far as, hammer, uh, as far as he can, right? So that is his goal. And you have to see uh, macro view and you have to go micro view. So you have to see, we call it enzan no metsuke, macro. You have to see yourself. You have to analyze yourself. The whole law. Okay, this is I. This is what I do. This is ideal form. And then you have to come to the micro view. Oh, okay. So to get there, I have to fix my foot. What about the angle? So all he analyzed those details, and then he, likely he was uh, he. I think he uh, he belonged to. Uh, sports department and he uh, he made a team so he can analyze himself through uh, scientific ways so that is another way he uh, approached himself so uh, instead of of course he something popped up in his head he do, he does it you know he did it and he tried and Maybe it looks like something is totally unrelated to hammer throwing. For example, he threw uh, Japanese fans. You know, how he used 
very slowly and he's learning you know maybe he's he wasn't uh, I, this is my guess because he didn't say anything about it uh, maybe angle and how he using how he uses his uh, muscles you know and how can he use hammer throwing to throw Japanese fan as far as he can and he did uh, uh, he threw a net for sh uh, fishing fishing net he was watching he was of uh, he was watching one day he was watching a, uh, a fisherman uh, at the uh, sea and he thought oh that looks like hammer throwing let's let me try that and he starts throwing fishing fishing net so which is kind of related but he did all kinds of things to improve his hammer throwing and to uh to get close to his ideal hammer throwing so this is very um you know and then especially when he was in uh, he if he fell into a slump oh not slump slump okay and uh he he tried a lot of things and then one day he came out of his slump so that is how uh, that is the attitude of his learning okay and his father he, uh, his father is uh, he was a, a, a hammer thrower too and uh, until his son uh, uh, koji uh, the very guy i'm talking about uh, he uh, broke the record he was the uh, he, he, his father was he was his father was holding the japanese record and his son broke his father's record which is pretty you know dramatic i think but and then um <coughs> uh, he, he he said himself uh no his father said you know sometimes you know this great athlete koji he didn't want to listen to his father for a while when he was young you know oh i i don't have to listen to him i'm gonna do my own way you know it's like an adolescence adolescence thing and but he said uh, his father thought is a great coach well you know until himself realizes what he should be doing you know he won't learn anything so this is a great way of coaching now sometimes of course different people different way of learning i mean if you have students and if we don't who doesn't who don't really listen you, you can stop teaching them it's not because you're stingy or anything because you're it's not because you're pissed off if they want to learn they they will come to you and then then they are ready to listen because they want to improve so much, right? Otherwise, they won't listen because they think they're right. I think that's a good attitude. You know, you have to stick to one method until you realize this doesn't work. And himself, uh, uh, Koji, said he... And then he didn't listen to his father, right? And he found someone who... who uh, competed in the world you know japanese guy and he did a really good job actually he was a uh, what do you call it i'm sorry i don't uh, really know the real uh, spear thrower <laughs> and he went to this spear thrower and uh, he trained hard under him and because uh, you know he was doing his own way and he learned from other people other person and then he realized his father was right and then uh, he it's because he went to someone else and he learned from someone else and he realized his father was right and this is really close to the teaching of Shu Ha Li okay so this is very important to understand right and it is okay to go to other people listen to a lot of people 
all right and you have to do trial uh, trial and error and also you have to go uh, try practice feedback and then you have to kind of start realizing oh okay the way i was learning was correct maybe you realize oh the way i was learning wasn't correct you know so this is very important process that's why it is very very important to find a good uh, teacher you know, at the very you know, at the very beginning if you learn from from a uh, you know bad teacher it takes a long time to fix your bad habits right so he had a good coach but he didn't want to listen to his good coach which is his, which was his father but and then he realized by learning from other people that his father was good coach and he was right which is a uh, shoe he went to shoe from ha and went back to shoe and he was going like that and this is a very important phrase from the uh, isao okano sensei he's a judo olympian uh, in tokyo olympics uh the first tokyo olympics in 2020 we're going to have the second tokyo olympics but uh it's it is it is says kata wo motte kata ni kodawarasu so kata we know kata is forms we have forms but we do not want to stick to the forms okay it doesn't mean you can do whatever you want to do you know what form is right you know the basics this is the basics but you don't have to uh, stick to the basics the basic is basics but we have kendo have opponent sometimes it doesn't work you have to you have to go with the flows you know in the fight right you uh, this is a basic form so we got to do this it doesn't work like that especially in the real you know real uh dead or alive situation right so you have good uh, good basics but you don't have to you don't based on the basics you fight you know so it's this kind of shoe ha ha pa all right uh so you learn for example main strike you know big main strike you know you learn small strikes right and then sometimes you have to change the direction of your sword direction of your uh what do you call it body and then you strike men too you know of course uh, you have to follow you have to follow the principle of the katana but sometimes you need to adjust the basics so you can actually uh you know strike so kind of uh this is kind of uh shu and you go to ha and also he talks about uh li as well okay what is li uh li, this is very important for us to know as well you know uh passing inheriting inheriting techniques means not just inheriting just passing this techniques to other generation as they are you have to develop those techniques and then pass it on to the next generation okay so that's very important so that's what he did so he analyzed you know how he can uh, possibly maximize his abilities go beyond his abilities to throw this hammer as far as he can and he analyzed himself and he analyzed uh the way he throw okay this is the basics and then i adjusted like this why don't you try this so this is kind of lead part okay so you learn basics and then you go to some other teachers and you learn a lot of things other than your own teacher and what are you learned from your own teacher and then you humbly develop what you learned from them okay learning basics getting this basics and then made adjustment or maybe improvement okay and then pass that on to the next generation this is a repart so without doing martial arts 
he realized maybe he learned some martial arts concept as well because he learns from a lot of people you know it's not only he learned from martial artists too okay how to use body and everything so he probably learned this kind of uh you know concept as well but he also learned from risk management consultant as well you know and he learned some concept and then he applied that to his competition okay so he's kind of uh, through people meeting people he learns a lot and he absorbed these whatever what he learned and then apply those to his hammer throwing and this is a very uh, Im important for us to learn or remember this is very martial arts or very japanese i think uh or very uh budo like uh to me competition is not only throwing where i'm gonna pick up the hammer i just throw i just threw and I'm going to clean the ground because the hammer just made a hole. And I clean the hammer and put it away. And then my hammer throwing is over. I think uh, since I started polishing, cleaning my hammers, I became stronger. I think this is very important. I think, uh, you know, it's not because he, it's not directly related to it. cleaning, because, you know, cleaning makes you stronger. It's not like that, you know, like how much, how much you think about what you do. That's a very important thing. Like cleaning shinai, you know, if you think shinai is just hidden material, hidden tool, you don't even think about, uh, you know, taking care of shinar. No, no, no. You got to do it because it is back in the old days. I don't want to compare, you know, but it is the, the principle of katana. It is something it protects you, right? So you make sure it's already in good condition, right? Otherwise, if it's bad, if it's already broken, you receive a cut. What happens, you know, if it has a crack, it will break and you're going to get, I mean, you'll get hurt or you, uh, the worst scenario is you'll die. So you have to take care of your own things. And while you're doing that, you can kind of start thinking about Kendo too. Oh, this is what happens. I should be doing that. You know, like through maintaining your equipment, you can kind of start being you know, humble and you realize how much you like it, you know, all kind of thing is connected. So I think it's very, very important to uh, always think about what you do. You know, it's, you, you can't just go to the dojo and then just do uh, those drills and come home. And what did I do? You know, what did I learn? You know, it's okay to do it, but you know, we can we can we can do the same thing going to the gym. So uh, I think this is very. Uh, I wanted to share, even though this is in, uh, written in Japanese. I think what we can learn a lot from this top athlete is actually doing the same thing as we do in kendo. So uh, I hope you enjoyed this podcast. And uh, I've been talking too much. I'm sorry about that. And I'm thinking to uh, do something really, uh, two things I'm thinking. I want you to choose one or two. Uh, no, well, number one, uh, if you want to know how to pass uh, Shodan, Nidan, Sandan, maybe possibly fourth Dan, Yondan, uh, or, or if you want to know how to improve your Kendo in adulthood, you know, you just study. I want you to uh, choose one, uh, how to pass, or two, uh, 
and how to improve your Kindle in adult, adulthood. I want to talk about it in the Patreon area. I wanted to open up uh, the door so you know what I do. And if you can support me, that would be really good. Uh, you know, but you can join and you can quit. Uh, after one lecture or whatever uh, so I want to do it in March I want to start doing it in March so if you are interested uh, please join patreon and also I want to choose so I can pick one uh, how to pass those exams or uh, how to improve uh, your Kindle in adulthood and of course this is uh, adulthood means I, I'm gonna use reverse engineering so it's very different from the traditional ways so that's why it's closed uh i don't want you to confuse you i don't want you to uh argue with your sensei uh just i one thing i just want to help you to improve kindle so you don't quit and then you can enjoy kindle more that is one one thing you can enjoy kindle i want you to enjoy kindle thank you for listening and then don't forget to choose one of those, one out of those. And I'll see you in the next podcast. I would like to send special thanks to patrons for their constant support through patreons.com slash Kindle for Life.